Hey guys, welcome back. Today in class we were discussing some of the theoretical framework behind timing and the OODA loop came up. And this is a cycle that we go through basically any time that we do anything. This was uh, codified by uh, Colonel Boyd and he would use it in reference to fighter pilots, but it really applies to just about anything that we do if there's a timing element that we need to uh, take control over. Basically the OODA loop is observe, orient, decide, and act. Now for us, as martial artists, the observation phase is, is pretty obvious. The orientation phase is, is a little bit uh, different than in some other areas in that we're binocular creatures. That means we see with both eyes, but that also means that our hips also orient based on our vision. What that means is that if I can control that orientation phase, or even better, bring it back to the observation phase, we're getting a timing advantage because what's happening is the person will observe, then they will orient, then, then they will decide and ultimately they will act. If I can get them back to the upper part of this cycle, I'm having a timing advantage. Now to be clear, this is happening in fractions of a second. This is not a very long window of opportunity, but it's a window of opportunity nonetheless that we want to take advantage of. Let me show you guys a quick little drill. Maybe we can conceptualize this for you. Adil, let me borrow for a second, please. No, you can go ahead and take the knife off. Okay, Adil's gonna come in and he's gonna cut my throat. Okay, see, that's 100% impact. That's where he expects to be. Now, when he does it, if I move, gives me this opportunity to cut the incoming limb. I've created a space by moving laterally that I can move in through here. So in defense, or I should say counteroffense, the premium is originally on footwork before anything else. In, 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 if you notice, I actually didn't cut him, but rather I just put my knife in the way, let him cut himself. So as he comes in to cut me, I come here, now I can counter. Go ahead and check. Boom, and again, I moved away. Let's look at it from this side. We're gonna go through the whole thing. So he comes to cut me, I move here, I give him there, and I went here. When he came to cut me, I moved in, put my knife there, let him cut himself. Okay, I, sh I threw it at him. What did he do? He moved that way too. And when he placed his arm, I moved away from his arm and then I cut. That subtle use of footwork is what's allowing him to go, or, or rather causing him to go back into the orientation phase of this loop. I, 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 sh I need to reiterate this. The observation orientation phase occurs because the eyes pick up on something but the hip needs to align itself. I wouldn't be walking down the street and then somebody calls me out and then say hey what's up and completely be this way but rather I would look and orient. A similar effect happens while you're fighting. If I move off your line of attack you're going to track with your eyes and your hips. Track with your eyes and then your hips. And that's a very important part of controlling the timing and controlling the fight ultimately. Guys, thank you very much for watching. I'm Tony. That's Adil. We're with the Miami Art News Group. And until next time, take care.